join our hearts together in prayer for a minute. Just let the word and the songs and the spirit just permeate your being with truth. He loves you. He loves you. Heavenly Father, we prepare our hearts. We prepare our hearts for your arrival because you desire to enter our lives in a new way every day. Oh, the things that you've already done for us, God, if you never did another thing, we are so blessed. Blessed. But Lord, you, you desire to come in and, oh, just take us on a journey with you that is abundant. Abundant. God, we can't even handle the thought of abundance. We are so contained in our little, little lives and the thought of change is always so frightening. God, open our eyes to see all the majesty and the beautiful gifts that you've set out for your people. And all we need to do is receive to recognize that we possess them in you and then choose to allow your spirit to lead us in the use of them. You died for every human being, Lord, but not every human being is interested in preparing a place in their heart for you. And I just pray if there's anybody gathered here that doesn't know you and hasn't welcomed you, the King of glory into their lives, that they would do that right now. They would just simply receive you because you bring with you the forgiveness of sins and the grace for abundant living. Thank you for the many lessons that we gain from your word that guides us in how we live in your love. So continue to teach us more as we prepare our hearts for this holy week. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> in Psalm 914, David saying, Hosanna, save me. So I can praise you publicly at Jerusalem's gates. So I can rejoice that you have rescued me. In the midst of Jesus' triumphal entry, it is a divine impulse that causes the people to rejoice, singing Hosanna. They rejoice because their spirits know that God has heard their prayers and is now responding to rescue them. It's just for them. How? And quite frankly, isn't it the same for us? How will you rescue me from this place, Jesus? And so many times it looks different than what we think. By going up to Jerusalem, the city of peace, Jesus accomplishes four things. Number one. He instigates a public demonstration on his behalf by choosing the right time for his entry as king. You see, all of Israel is gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. They're there to celebrate as well the prophecy that the Messiah will one day come and rescue them. It's time for Jesus to be recognized as that Messiah, as the true king of God's choosing. And in this demonstration, Jesus clearly states his claim as king. Somebody say it's the right time. Right. Number two, Jesus' triumphal entry actually corners 
the religious leaders inside the walled city of Jerusalem, just like he corners us in our own hearts. <laughs> For them, he brings their timetable and their plans. They're not happy with Jesus, and you know that. They don't like this intrusion, and he doesn't look like their king. But God brings their plans together with his plan in that place of time, and he makes a connection. And in that moment, and in that connection, earth is connected to heaven. A divine connection is made in that moment. Jesus, he, he chooses the right place for heaven to touch earth. There's no turning back now. God is steering all of the events regarding his son. And I tell you, God steers your life. He does. He does. The religious leaders, well, they're filled with disdain. They're offended by Jesus' very claim to kingship. They're not seeking to crucify Jesus because he's going around doing good. They don't mind his miracles. They're not impressed by them, but they don't really mind them. What offends them is that he actually demonstrates his claim as king. And based on that alone, they don't want him. It's the story Jesus told, isn't it? The people didn't want their king. But Jesus says, don't worry about it. <laughs> I came to seek and to save the lost. <laughs> and Zacchaeus is certainly glad. And I am certainly glad that he came to save this lost soul. Somebody say, it's the right place. It's the right place. Number three, Jesus. He's the word of God in human form. He is the incarnate word. So he reveals his kingship by fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. It involves Jerusalem. It involves the Messianic king. Jesus directs and sends his disciples to find the donkey his father has prepared for his public entry into the city of Zion. And we see that it was all planned years before in the prophecy of Zechariah. I'll read it to you. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look your king is coming to you. He is righteous. He is victorious, yet he is humble. And he is riding on a donkey. In fact, he's riding on a donkey's colt. The word of God clearly indicates that riding a donkey is not at all beneath the dignity of Israel's king. But the religious leaders have no clue about God's heart that is actually found in God's word. Somebody say it's the right word. Right and number four, Jesus shows himself to be the messianic king who brings peace rather than war. Jesus, he chooses the right way to express his mission of peace. Donkeys, well, they were known for their strength, but they were not usually ridden um, by military people, and the people wanted a military person. Here we see that clearly Jesus is demonstrating he is a non-military person, and he continues to make them angry with his message. The fact that this donkey's never been ridden, it demonstrates that it was set apart by the Father for the use of the Son and his mission to redeem humanity. Do you know that each one of us are set apart to be used by the Father for the glory of the Son? Our lives 
are so valuable. Somebody say it's the right message. It's the right message. <laughs> Wherever Jesus goes, he brings salvation with him. He wants to bring ongoing salvation to each one of us. So rejoice. Our response is to bring the king a heart of worship. That's what we are to do. Oneness. A, a heart of worship is a heart that is one with the Father through the Son and the power of the Spirit. So it's the right time. Today is the day to welcome Jesus into a new place in your heart. He is the King of glory. It's the right place. Your heart was created to long for Jesus to redeem the lost places that you have. So let's all welcome the King of redemption. It's the right word. We seek to know the truth about our lives, and Jesus knows the past, present, and the future. And he prepares our hearts to step into every good thing for the glory of God. And it's the right message. We can live in a place of peace if Jesus actually becomes our king of hope. I'd like to read from Psalm 118. Let this be your song today. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and I will thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter in, enter in there. I thank you for answering my prayer, and I thank you for giving me the victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it's wonderful to see. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He's shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with the cords on the altar, the sacrifice of each of our lives. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. If we allow Jesus a welcome entry into our hearts and crown him king, we certainly have a reason to rejoice. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for the beauty of your salvation. We rejoice, Lord, just because you love us. We rejoice because we have been redeemed. We rejoice because you have a future and a hope for us. And Lord, we step into every day knowing that you have already seen the past, the present, and the future, and you love us immensely with that enduring love. Nothing can separate us from your love. So today, Lord, we thank you for the love that you extend. We ask for you to continue to prepare our hearts as we head into this holy week. We know, Lord, that this is to prepare us for a new place, a new way of loving you and becoming one with you in the work of your spirit. We ask for you to accept the offering of our lives, and, and we give them gladly to you. We know that uh, the, our salvation is that joy, the joy of the Spirit. And so we just thank you for the joy that you fill us with. We are going to rejoice and be glad today, tomorrow, and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.